Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game uh, from the 2021 FIDHS.com Grand Swiss. It's Boris Gelfand versus Sergei Movsesian and it's one of the games you guys have requested the most. It's um, not from round 11, it's actually from round 8, uh, but uh, you know the, the game is just crazy. The game features 5 queens, you know, not 2 or 3 or 4, but actually 5 queens. Uh, and it's incredibly short and that makes it uh, all, the, uh, all, all, all the more impressive. But before we check out the game, as the tournament is now... Uh, uh, officially over i would just like to show you uh, who uh, won what place and who qualified for the candidates tournament because as you know two players from this tournament will qualify for the candidates tournament so if you guys don't want any spoilers you know skip some 20 seconds of the video because now i will uh, show uh, what um, uh, what's been happening that's the wrong uh, that's the wrong one those are the live ones let me just uh, load that up uh, real quickly there we go uh, so after all has been done and said, uh, these are the, the final standings, or rather these are the, the top six people. Uh, so uh, uh, Alireza Firuja and uh, Fabiano Corwana have qualified for the 2022 Candidates Tournament. Uh, as you can see, Fabiano uh, is tied uh, with Grigori Oparin for uh, second place, but uh, he has um, a better tiebreaker and uh, th that's why he got uh, into the Candidates Tournament. Uh, a lot of people were very, very close and a lot of people could have uh, been on seven and a half points if you guys have been following the action up until the very end um, David Howell played against Vincent Keimer some I don't know maybe 80 moves game and it was uh, it was a draw for for the last uh, four hours the, the game lasted like seven and a half hours the, the commentators left they ended the, the stream before that game finished because uh, well they, they just couldn't take it anymore it was taking too long but in the end they settled for a draw uh, but how really tried to, to push for something there uh, but yeah that being said now you know you guys know who the uh, two candidates are from this uh, fidichess.com grand swiss um, uh, of course fabi and uh, alireza uh, and they will be joining the other known candidates sergey karyakin uh, young shishtov duda uh, temur rajabov and of course the uh, loser of the world chess championship match between Carlson and nipomnishi uh, those are the uh, six that are known now and two will be decided uh, uh, in the fide uh, grand prix in the in 2022 so now you've been informed let's check out this uh, five queen game so Gelfand with the white pieces opens with d4 uh, we have d5 by Movsesian c4 c6 sorry about that uh, and knight to f3 so nothing out of the ordinary here knight to f6 and knight to c3 and here we have d captures on c4 so uh, uh grabbing that pawn we are in the slav defense uh, we have e4 now preparing e5 and black defends the pawn with b5 so now you can play bishop captures on c4 we have bishop to e2 and now e6 uh, we have a4 now challenging this um, uh, pawn chain and now we advance the pawn to b4 so this has all been played before nothing new here and you don't want to move the Knight, you want to attack your opponent's knight so e5 attacking the knight on f6 b captures on c3 e captures on f6 c captures on b2 and now f captures on g7 so a true capture fest here b captures on a1 uh, promoting to a queen and g captures on h8 promoting to a queen so already there are four queens on the board uh, and we have queen to a5 check this is the only good move for black and black of course plays it as this is a known position uh, and now uh, there is a game where king to f1 was played Played, but that's not really a good move because after some like queen to c3 it will be very hard for for white to play this game uh so you you could uh, you know try some other things but uh best is what was actually played in the game so knight to d2 just blocking check this way and now c3 attacking the knight here and you can't really move the knight it seems like you could fork the two queens uh how often do you get to say that when you know analyzing a chess game fork the two queens uh, and uh, but the problem is black has c2 opening up a discovery here attacking the queen on d1 and here we have three queens that are actually hanging in, in, incredible uh, and after some like queen to d2 we're gonna play queen captures on d2 with check king captures as uh, you know we want to keep attacking the queen and we want to open up uh, the, this uh, back rank for the rook and now queen to b1 it will be incredibly difficult for white to play this for example uh, knight to c5 we're gonna play knight to d7 and now after some like knight captures bishop captures this is now you know uh, very very difficult for for why did that king is in the middle of the board the pawn here is a monster and uh, it, it's not going to be easy uh, but okay after c3 of course you don't go knight b3 here in the game castles was played so we give up the knight here 
Pawn captures on d2, bishop captures, now we trade a pair of queens. Also, you know, a funny thing to say. Rook captures on d1 with the black queen still being attacked. And now we have queen captures on a4. And this maybe is not the most impressive way to continue this with black. So you're basically uh, saying... Um, uh, do I want to exchange this pawn for this pawn? And then I get to push my A pawn to bring another queen into the game. But white will also push his H pawn to bring another queen into the game. Or do I want to play something like queen F5, guard this pawn, and, you know, stop the all, all this queen madness. Uh, but okay, in the game, queen captures on A4 was played. We have queen captures on H7, and now A5. Black starts pushing on the queen side, and white starts pushing on the king side. So uh, obviously, four queens are simply not enough for one chess game. Uh, and now... Uh, uh, you could go for something like uh, bishop to a6, but then bishop to h5 uh, five is very, very annoying. So uh, instead of this bishop to a6, black first plays rook to a7. Now the, the f7 pawn is guarded, and you, you can play bishop to a6 next. So here we have h5, white continues pushing the pawn, and now bishop to a6. We have bishop to f3, uh, of course not uh, allowing this trade, and rook to d7 now, putting pressure on the d4 pawn, but that's a lot of moves, and white is uh, still pushing on the king side and you you stopped pushing on the queen side so here we have pawn to h6 uh if this was um uh... A normal game, maybe a move like bishop to e3 can also be played, but this is a game where we already had four queens on the board. So naturally, Gelfand wants to have another one, so he pushes h5. Uh, rook captures on d4, and now comes bishop to h5, attacking this uh, f7 pawn. So we have to defend it, rook back to d7. So we grab the pawn, and we just brought a rook back, nothing happening here. The problem is queen to g8. Now uh, h7, h8 is coming, and what do you play here? Well, black played bishop to d3. Uh, it's a very tricky maneuver, uh, but it doesn't really work. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Boris uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this spectacular move as this is not an easy one to figure out. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is uh, Bishop to G5. So congratulations to everyone who found this. You are, uh, you know, a, a spectacular player. Uh, the problem is, uh, for those of you who thought about H7, this isn't all that impressive. If Bishop captures Queen captures, we can play Queen to D4 and Black is perfectly fine here. You don't have all that much to worry about. However, after Bishop to G5, there are terrible threats in the position. Just to give you an example, if black continues developing, we just capture the bishop here. And after, let's say, rook captures on d3, queen captures on f7 is checkmate. The bishop covers all the dark squares, uh, and that's it. So you have to do something about this. So we have bishop back to g6, now with a double attack on the rook on d1, and also attacking the bishop on h5. Uh, but white had uh, uh, all this figured out in advance. We have rook to e1. Uh, now there are, there's too much pressure on this f7 pawn it's guarding the e6 pawn it's guarding the g6 bishop it's um, the the pressure is simply unbearable so here we have bishop captures on h5 but now of course uh, the pawn uh, goes to h7 uh, we have queen to b4 now, attacking the rook on e1, but now not even, you know, worrying about this rook, just giving it up for the e6 pawn. Rook captures on e6, f captures, queen captures on e6, check, rook to e7, and now queen to c8 with check. Uh, king back to f7, and now queen to f5 with check. Uh, asking the black king, what do you want to do? Do you want to go maybe to g7? But going to g7 doesn't really uh, work because bishop to f6 check and it's game over. There's really not much you can do here after king to f7, bishop c3 check. Uh, wins the queen, gets another queen into the game. There's uh, no playing this. And king to h6 isn't really uh, any, any better because we just bring a queen into the game and that's it. Rook h7 uh, and a queen captures on h7 with checkmate. So instead, after this queen to f5 check, black repeated, king to e8. We have queen to c8 with check, king to f7, and queen to f5 with check. So it seems like a repetition, but of course Boris will not be uh, repeating uh, one more time, uh, and now brings a fifth queen into the game. So queen to h8, and now we have rook to e1 check, king to h2, and now bishop to g4. There's really not much you can do against two queens, but you have to try, uh, and now you are, you know, 
uh, free to do whatever you want here. You, uh, the, the king is pretty much, uh, you know, naked here in the middle of the board. There is nothing for him to do there. And the queens uh, will now pile up on him. Queen to g6 check. King to d7. Queen to f7 with check. Now if you go to c8, it's, you know, just queen captures, captures, and captures. This is all over for black. So instead, uh, we have bishop to e7 blocking. But now uh, queen uh, goes to e8 to deliver a check. Uh, king to c7. And now bishop captures an e7. And it was in this position on move 37 that Sergei Musesian resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So really, really an impressive game by uh, by Boris. Uh, but of course, you always need two players to, to create a masterpiece such as this one. So very, very impressive. You know, five queens in a chess game. That's something, uh, you know, you'd expect from an Aliehin game. Uh, but yeah, uh, for uh, for those of you who are uh, interested, once again, here are the final standings of the uh, of the tournament. Uh, Firuja and uh, Caruana are uh, qualified for the candidates tournament, and it's going to be very very impressive. Will Fabi be looking for his uh, bounce back uh, after losing to Magnus uh, in London, or will we have maybe Alireza as the next challenger to maybe Magnus, maybe Nepo, or some of the other players? We'll see. But you know, chess is uh, you know definitely uh, in a good place. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank Sazan Faiz, uh, Alessandro Atura, Tom Deralo, Mike Kennedy, and David Kimura for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the, uh, not the coverage of this event, but I will, uh, you know, uh, comb through some games to see if there are some gems that we've missed. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.